take um, public transportation to and from work? Yes. And do you feel safe on the public transportation? Yeah, for the most part. And do you feel safe on the metro? Yes, I do. Would you feel comfortable taking public transportation in another country, in another city? Yeah, we all, we travel quite a bit, so yeah, we we kind of just make yeah means and just get on with it, and it's usually quite fun. And I commute into Chinatown five days a week. It's pretty easy, comfortable around here. The stations are clean, they're well lit. There's lots of people. It's very comfortable. Always felt safer on the train than I do on a bus for some reason. And I know the metros down here, they just got the cameras on the newer train cars. So they're trying to help us out, we'll help the public out with safety as much as they can. I don't travel during night just to be safe. Well, I want to stop taking public transportation now because you got to deal with um, people always on the bus loud. You know, um, you know, the kids get on the bus and they real loud and outrageous. You heard it, a very important topic, public transportation and safety for women. Commuting to and from work or for whatever the reason could be a major chore for most of us, especially if you have to watch your back. And for women, that chore well, is a challenge. And more often than not, they're targets for harassment, physical or verbal, on public transportation. And the risks facing them are highlighted in a new study by the Thomson Reuters Foundation they talk about the safest city for a woman to be on on public transport, which is New York City. Number one, followed by number two, Tokyo, and number three, Beijing. Latin America is the worst place to be as a female commuter because four cities from there made it into the top ten worst list. Most of them say they were physically harassed. At the very bottom, Lima, Peru, Mexico City, and last, Bogota, Colombia. I sat down with the CEO of Thomson Reuters Foundation, Monique Villa, to talk more about the importance of women's safety and its impact on the global economy. The biggest surprise was from far that uh, the worst cities in terms of safety for transport uh, in the big capitals of the world are the three worst are all in Latin America. So it was quite a surprise because I thought that New Delhi could compete quite well with uh, a few of these cities, but Bogota, Mexico City, and Lima are the worst, followed by uh, Delhi and then Jakarta. Uh, on the best side, um, you have first New York, which is uh, the safest of these uh, uh, great capitals in the world, and it's followed immediately by Tokyo and Beijing before London, Seoul, and Paris. So this was very interesting. And it's, you know, a perception poll on how do you feel secure or not on the tube or on the bus in your, in your, in your city, but also with personal questions to, to, to each of the 400 women that were interview, in, interviewed in each of the cities on uh, have you ever been harassed uh, physically? Have you ever been harassed uh, uh, verbally on, on, on public transport? And so it gives quite a good picture of how cities have evolved, like New York, from catastrophe 20, 25 years ago, where you would never dare to go alone in the tube at night in New York. I mean, I didn't. Um, where today everybody feels very safe, and I feel very safe. Uh, to, to, to Bogota, where obviously they have a lot of progress is to do. And cities like Tokyo and Beijing, where mostly f women feel quite safe. Although I must say for Beijing, quite interesting. They feel ver very safe, but they still want to have women's only carriages, which is uh, interesting in, in a sense. Let, let, me, let me take a, a quick step back, and I'm going to get to some of the details of the report. Fascinating report, by the way. How did you come up with the idea of doing the report, and why is the results of the report important, in your opinion? Yeah, yeah. The, the result of the report is very important for me, and the idea came, I travel all the time around the world, and I see these cities like Lagos, like Jakarta, where you are stuck in traffic forever. And I always think, how do the women in this city uh, manage to, to just live their life? Because uh, women generally have three lives. They have to accompany the children to school in the morning, then they have their job, then they have to do the, the, the to, 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 to go shopping, take the children back, etc., etc. How do you do when the transportation is just inefficient 
or when it is unsafe. In that case, it's essentially the safety uh, side of things. And it is crucial to know that because we know very well that if a woman doesn't feel safe, she will not probably take a job far from her home because she will be afraid that something happens to her. So maybe she will not take the job, which has a direct impact on her family, on the children, education, uh, etc. And so it has a direct impact on the economy uh, of the country. So making sure that um, uh, transport in big cities is not only speedy, efficient, but also safe for women is a priority. And I don't think anybody has sought to shed light on that before. And I thought it would be important to do that. Yeah, it's certainly a very unique report. Um, again, for our audience, you mentioned it before. 400 people in each of these capital cities were polled on a various number, uh, a various num different types of questions. One of the questions in particular was whether or not, if you were harassed or if you feel threatened, whether you felt that the authorities would be able to do anything about it or investigate it. And surprisingly, Beijing ranked very high in people's confidence. In other words, yeah. they felt that authorities would at least investigate or look into any uh, of these incidents. Exactly. Are you surprised by that? Yeah. No, I was not surprised by that because I think that indeed I've taken the tube in Beijing and I felt very secure in it. And indeed, these are the cities where citizens know and men know that if you do even petty crimes, as we say, you know, small crimes like, you know, groping a woman on the tube or, or whatever, you could have problems if the woman is going to the police and say uh, 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 and ask for investigation and prosecution. So in the cities where this happens and where the authority of the law uh, is respected, uh, it, it makes a huge difference. Yeah. And this is what has happened in New York, obviously, in the last 20 years. This is what has happened also in Tokyo in a different way. But in Beijing, for sure, it, has, it, it happens. 